It's been a while since I've reviewed one of these, and that is an Android TV box. And this one is tiny, as you can see. It's called the Dynalink, and this does support Netflix up to 4K and HDR support, along with Disney+, Plus, Amazon Prime Video, all of those popular streaming services. It's powered by an Amulogic quad core with two gigabytes of RAM and eight gigabytes of storage, which yes, is enough for streaming services. So what did surprise me is how small this little TV box is. So we have a quick start guide and just look at the size of this thing. So it fits in the palm of your hand, really, really small. So at the top here simply just states Dynalink. We have micro USB there just to power it. Power on button, status LED, and right here at the back, an HDMI port. So this is HDMI 4K, this one here, so HDMI 2.1 spec, HDR support too as well with this. And there's just simply a few specs there on the back with it. So what is missing would have been great on one of these sides here, or even on the back there, if they could have put a USB port on this. So USB 2, at least enough to access a pen drive with say some video files on it. Now the power supply, that is right here, very small too as well. Now this one's only five volts, one amp, so it needs next to nothing in terms of power, this thing, super low powered. HDMI cable's nice and short, of course, to plug it into a TV. And here we have the double, triple A, sorry, batteries that are required for the remote here. And this is a typical Android TV style remote, as you can see. So we have the directional buttons there, OK in the middle, back, volume up and down, dedicated buttons for Netflix, YouTube, Google Play there. There's a built-in microphone, power button, mute, and the home key right there. It's a good quality remote too as well. So the initial setup will take you about five minutes. It's very straightforward. You can even use your phone to help get set up, get your wireless connection connected and your account. That is Google, of course, and Google Play. This is on here, Google Play Store. You have Google Assistant, that is there too as well. So what I've done is just install a couple of things here just to go through really what you can expect out of this TV box. But the main thing is I think most people will be looking at streaming applications. So things like Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, that's of course all supported. And we do have DRM, I've checked it out, Widevine level one support and HDR support, 4K support with everything. So the maximum support here. So this is really good to see. So Amazon Prime Video, I will load this one up here first. Okay, and that was very quick. I think it was actually running in the background. Now the menu system, just like the main menu, even with this app here, very quick and fast to go through this. Of course, depending a little bit on your internet connection. Now the wireless, I have not had any troubles with the wireless connection on this one. I'm connected up to wireless uh, five, okay, and that is 5.4 gigahertz. No Wi-Fi six support with this one. So I can't go into anything here really for copyright reasons, but you can see when you get into, for example, something that's going to support UHD, which is our 4K, uh, that you'll see down here with the episodes UHD support and if it is HDR that will pop up too but currently the way I'm running it with the screen capture card HDR is not showing but trust me it does and it does work so load time is very quick now if I try to show you anything right now it's going to spit out a problem with my HDMI cable but I think it's because it doesn't like me screen capturing Amazon Prime Video obviously for copyright reasons there so I'll get out of this and we'll take a look too at our Netflix performance and what we can expect out of that. But the programs and everything, I've been watching TV series and Amazon Prime Video running flawless, absolutely no issues and very good quality. The same deal here for Netflix, that it is very quick going through it and it will tell you if it does support 4K or it's HD and the HDR2 there as well. So when I go through this, the performance again is very, very good. Now it's only just showing HD here at the moment, again because of the way I'm screen capturing with this only connected up via 1080p, otherwise you'd see that for anything it does support it. So Gladiator doesn't, but some of the TV series and things, uh, for example like this one, Cobra Kai, uh, that would come up with 4K if it does support it, which it doesn't at the moment, but when I connect it up directly to my TV and not through the capture card, it does there. So I'll just quickly load in a tiny bit of footage here so we can see what to expect. All right. And it is very, very quick here. This is only going to take just seconds to get straight into it. And then it takes a little while to improve that quality and the performance of it. So just quickly skip ahead. And you can see that that is fine. And the quality starts to improve the more it's going. So I can't show you too much of that. Unfortunately, of course, 
Uh, that is just under fair use at the moment, just to show a few seconds of that on how it performs. But very good Netflix performance. So performance and the quality looking through the YouTube app here is great. And it's very, very fast to scroll through everything. Now take a look at the performance uh, we can expect here. So just load up this video. Should not take too long. Okay, it's gone straight into it without any problems. So let's just skip back here on the timelines. It's gone to where I've been watching before and see how long that takes. That is really quick. And the quality looks great. I've had no problems there with the quality. So just bringing up that menu again, you can go over to more quality. You can see these are the options. So the maximum being 4K and surprisingly quick, very quick to cache in those videos. And I don't even have the best internet connection. Of course, being an Android TV, TV box here that we do have a microphone built into the remote that's Bluetooth and you can use Google Assistant with it. So various commands, you can use it to open applications, close them, information. It's all very straightforward and most people would know about this, but I'll give you a very quick demo. Open Netflix The Witcher. Got it. Opening Netflix. So it has brought that up. Netflix, The Witcher, as I stated and wanted it to. Close application. So you can use that as well as a simple quick way to close the app there. And even things like the weather, very straightforward. What is today's weather forecast? In Catalonia today, it'll... And one last little test here. Open Amazon Prime Video. Opening Prime Video. Okay, brought that up very quick. The performance has been great and you can use it to go into the App Store and also search for applications. Instead of typing, you can simply just dictate to it as well. And even with my accent, it seems to be quite accurate. No problems that I'm having with it. For simple, straightforward commands that is. So what is this powered by? So I'm gonna just launch here ADA64 and that'll give us all the info we need to know. So it is powered by an AmiLogic chip and we see them everywhere in these Android TV boxes. So it's a quad core, this one. The maximum turbo is 1.8 gigahertz and it does have the Mali G31, as you see here under display. Sorry, there we go. Mali G31, okay. And under codec support here, take a look. There are a lot of codecs in here. Now it does support HEVC. Scroll down on this, you can see HEVC support and even VP9. So it will be able to play some demanding files. The problem is with this particular Android TV box here is that there is no micro SD card support, which would have been great, and a USB 2 port. Uh, really missing out on that because then we could plug in external files, video files, and play those, of course. Gaming performance uh, with this Ami Logic quad core. And the Mali graphics, is it enough? It is enough to play. You can see these really old titles. Now this is Real Racing 3 and the performance is not too bad. So the limiting factor, of course, with gaming is really going to be that internal storage that we've only got four gigabytes free and some of the new titles, they are very, very large and it's some terrible gameplay from me, just crashing. But if you want to play some of these smaller, light, older titles, it is possible on this Android TV box, as you can clearly see with a title like Real Racing 3 here. So that's enough of my terrible driving here. And lastly, under our preferences here. So about, you can take a look and see that it is version 10 and the Android security patch level here is February the 5th. So I do hope that that gets updated considering now we are in July here. And I guess getting out of that, there's a couple of other things I can show you too. So the standard kind of settings and the free available amount of space, very, very low here. Uh, the total storage is 4.8 gigabytes internal storage. So you really cannot put a lot on it. So it's basically just for streaming services, of course. Uh, Chromecast built in, screensaver there, Google Assistant, that's there too as well. And your typical kind of settings that you would find with an Android TV box such as this one. Okay, so all up, performance of this going in and out of the menus, downloading things, is all very good here from this Android TV box, okay? So there's no noticeable 
issues on performance in and out of the menus. The quad core handles it fine. Netflix's Amazon Prime Video with the connection, I've not had any issues with my wireless connection. It hasn't dropped out, it's streamed everything really fast and it caches in Netflix and Amazon Prime Video very quick there too. And runs up to 4K and 4K HDR, HDR support there as well. My LG TV detected it straight away and it went into its HDR mode, which was great to see there. So it does have wide vine level one, which of course is what we need to be running the 4K and over standard definition. A lot of the older boxes or the no-name brand ones will often not have. Even projectors I've reviewed not have that, so good that it does have it. But what about the cons then? So it doesn't have any expandable storage. There's no micro SD card slot. There is no USB 2 port. And that for me is, well, it's disappointing because that would have been perfect to have at least one of those micro SD card slots. So I could put some video files on it, play them off it because the AmiLogic here with the G31 can actually play demanding video files. But of course, the trouble is now trying to access those external files with this and a USB 2 port would have been perfect to have. But apart from that, if you're looking for just really playing Netflix, Amazon Prime Video and Disney Plus, having good performance in a tiny little package and being able to stream up to 4K and HDR, then it certainly covers that base there, the Dyna link right here. So thank you so much for watching this video. 